Hello biologists, we are going to do the review for sexual reproduction in meiosis, which is quiz 3.31. First let's talk about chromosomes. It's a long strand of DNA that contains a set of genes. Part of the DNA on a chromosome that codes for a specific protein is a gene. So there are genes that are specific places all along this chromosome. If we look at human chromosome number 17, we know some of the genes that are on this chromosome and one of them may cause breast cancer. Whether this gene is passed down to a child depends on the events in meiosis, so we're going to talk more about meiosis. But first of all, let's talk about reproductive cells. Meiosis creates reproductive cells. Sexual reproduction requires the production of specialized cells called gametes. Those gametes in males are called sperm, and in females they're called eggs. Reproductive cells, both eggs and sperm, are haploid. That means they have half the number of normal chromosomes in a regular cell. The normal number of chromosomes for a human is 46. When an organism has a complete set of chromosomes, it's called diploid. That means two. Remember, you could ride a bicycle or a dicycle. They both would have two wheels. We usually represent the number of copies of a chromosome in an organism by the letter N. So when we talk about haploid cells that are haploid, we're talking about one N. When we talk about cells that are diploid, we're talking about 2N. And normal N for humans in somatic cells, that's body cells, is 46. Normally, all of your cells in your nose and your toes and your eyes and your knees have 46 chromosomes because they have two copies of the 23 different chromosomes that humans have. So just one copy is 23, that's eggs and sperm, and all the rest of your cells have 46 chromosomes. The reason we need meiosis is we need to reduce the number of chromosomes by half of normal cells to get eggs and sperm. When eggs and sperm combine, they make a fertilized egg called a zygote. The sperm has one copy, or 23 chromosomes, one of every 23. The egg has one copy, one of every 23 chromosomes in humans. And together, they make two copies when they get together and form a zygote. Meiosis is to produce these sex cells, gametes, eggs and sperm, that have half the normal chromosomes. They only have 23, not 46, because they only have one copy of each chromosome. When eggs and sperm join, 23 plus 23 equals 46, which is the normal number of chromosomes for a body cell. And this zygote here, you can already see it's turned into a bunch of cells, and it'll turn into an entire organism. These two cells combine to make one, that's the first cell of a zygote, and then that cell keeps dividing. So eggs and sperm are haploid, and the zygote is diploid. So let's do the first multiple choice practice question. Two haploid cells combine to form one diploid cell. When does this happen? Fertilization, mitosis, meiosis, interphase, or you don't know. It happens during fertilization. This is the correct answer. Let's talk about sexual reproduction. The whole idea of meiosis and sexual reproduction is to combine two different sets of chromosomes. And when you combine two different sets of chromosomes, you get genetically unique offspring. So B is the correct answer. That's an advantage of sexual reproduction. Diploid cells undergo meiosis to get haploid cells, and then through fertilization, you get diploid cells again. So it's a, the diploid cells divide, they make eggs and sperm, the eggs and sperm get together in fertilization, 
it's not really a cycle because it pretty much stops here at fertilization but and then this starts with new tissue but this is how things are divided up your diploid cell you go under undergo meiosis your haploid cell and eggs and sperm and when those eggs and sperm get together you have a diploid cell again the genetic material of the original cells the original cell is divided among the new cells so those original diploid cells that makes egg that make eggs and sperm divide the genetic material um, amongst the, di the cells and this will make more sense when we go over meiosis a little bit more the production of gametes sperm and eggs is called meiosis and the one of the important things in, to recognize in meiosis is you don't just get two cells in the end you get four and this right here the two different copies of the chromosome let's say you have chromosome one they're going to swap some information in a process called crossover and we'll talk about that in just a bit crossover is what makes meiosis different from mitosis it's one of the differences let's look at some other differences here in a diagram of meiosis you can see like mitosis it has prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase but that happens twice there's prophase 2 metaphase 2 anaphase 2 and telophase 2 and when you're done with meiosis you have four cells not just two mitosis remember produce body cells it's just making exact copies and it produces two new diploid cells that's cells with two copies of a chromosome in it meiosis produces four new cells and they're haploid they only have one copy of a chromosome so stop the video for a moment and see if you can match the term with the definition here are the correct answers for mitosis mitosis produces diploid cells it produces body cells like those in your nose and your toes and your eyes and your knees and it produces identical cells they're exact copies meiosis produces haploid cells that's cells with half as many chromosomes they only have one copy they produce it only produces gamete cells it does not produce cells in other parts of your body and it produces unique sex cells those eggs and sperm are each unique they're all different when an organism is produced by sexual reproduction it gets half its genetic information from each parent here are mom's chromosomes here are dad's chromosomes here's the zygote the new cell that's going to turn into all of the cells that make up a human being in every cell there are two versions of each chromosome so so this is the chromosome you got from your mom this is the chromosome you got from your dad they're both chromosome one one comes from mom one comes from dad these are called homologous chromosomes they're both the same number they're both code for the same thing for example this gene might code for how big your nose is or this gene might code for what kind of toes you have and that gene is the same on both chromosomes that's what makes them homologous they have the same general shape and contain the same genes but they don't contain exactly the same information the allele for red hair this is the gene for hair color it might be red on one and blonde on the other early in meiosis the homologous chromosomes copy themselves so here's mom's mom or dad's chromosome hanging out in your cells and it makes an exact copy of itself and you can see then it has like the familiar X shape and here's dad's chromosome number one it makes a copy of itself and it's that familiar X shape this here is called the centromere it's where the two halves are attached to each other 
Here's a simplified view of the chromosomes in mitosis. So you have one copy from mom, one copy from dad in the cells that produce eggs and sperm. It copies itself, and then there's this crazy process called crossover, where these genes switch information. So mom's number one and dad's number one hang out with each other, and what happens is some of the information gets exchanged. So some of gene, dad's genes get attached to mom's chromosome, just like this. You can see the orange chromosome now has a little bit of green on it. And that's the same genes that came off mom's chromosome are now going to stick to dad's. And so there's been an exchange of information here. This process right here is called crossover. And this process is super important and very unique to meiosis. After crossover, the cells divide, you get two cells, and then you get another round of PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and you get four separate cells. Four cells are produced at the end of, instead of two. These are diploid cells, but then PMAT happens again, and you get haploid cells. Crossover is a way of making each sperm and egg unique. See, this one has just all yellow, all red, yellow, red, red, yellow. Crossover is unique to sexual reproduction. It's why animals go through all the bother of trying to find a partner, make eggs and sperm, get them together, because they get different organisms and more variation. You want, if you want to make unique individuals, you need to do sexual reproduction. And that, if you want to do sexual reproduction and have eggs and sperm, you need to do meiosis. And every time meiosis happens, you get four gametes with a unique set of um, chromosomes. This is very important to remember. Cell differentiation happens after meiosis too. These specialized cells become eggs and sperm. Crossover doesn't happen in mitosis. It's a huge difference between mitosis and meiosis. So just to recap, in meiosis, chromosomes line up differently. Crossover happens that mixes up the parent chromosomes and gametes are created. See if you can fill in the boxes and pause the video for a moment. A couple differences, more differences between meiosis and mitosis. In metaphase of mitosis, the chromosomes line up like this. And they get pulled apart at the centromere. It's single file just like elementary school. In meta phase of meiosis, the, cro the homologous chromosomes line up together like this. They exchange their information. It's more like a double date because you have two pairs in meta phase one of meiosis. That's an important difference. So what happens to homologous pairs of chromosomes during part one of meiosis? Take a moment, pause the video, try to figure it out. Remember, they line up attached to each other in meta phase one. This only happens in meiosis, where you have two of the same chromosomes lining up and switching information. Remember, some, some of mom's genes got on dad's chromosome, and some of dad's genes got on mom's chromosome. In anaphase one of meiosis, the chromosomes travel like this. There's still two copies. This is 2N when they're pulled apart in anaphase. They're not single chromatids. This would be a single chromatid, just one copy. That's, this is what it looks like in mitosis, but in meiosis, they travel as a pair during anaphase one. After the first PMAT in meiosis one, you get PMAT two prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase 2, and you end up with single copies of each chromosome in the resulting cells that are haploid. Remember, if you have a single copy, you're haploid, because most of all, normally, your cells have two copies of each chromosome. 
Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please watch the videos on meiosis from the Bozeman Bio from Bozeman Biology or Crash Course.